Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today I'm playing another Zerg vs Terran for you and this is actually going to be the very first StarCraft 2 upload that I made right after a really good um, Zerg vs Terran that I played a couple days ago. I'll put that as the very first link down below the like button in the description of this video because I was actually really proud of that game. That was a sick game. But anyway, uh, we're up against Littlefinger apparently. Littlefinger obviously one of the dudes from Game of Thrones. One of those characters that I personally am a huge fan of. Really clever guy. I'm obviously not gonna spoil anything, but hey, Littlefinger is cool dude. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and make an expansion as soon as we possibly can. And even though I played Mutaling Bane in the previous one, I'm gonna be resorting right here to the good old plus one plus one Roach Ravager timing attack. I really do like that build, in particular on a map like this, because defending against drops, even though you know your bases are gonna be. Uh, like on high grounds and low grounds or whatnot, it's still relatively easy. And also, I've been watching a lot of IEM, and in the IEM tournament, which is, you know, some very high level play, we see a lot of Roach Ravagers. So it definitely does mean that the highest level of players are also doing this exact strategy, and, you know, there's no real good reason for us to try and deviate from that. Now, obviously, since we are going to be playing Roach Ravager, uh, we will need to transition. And watching the Intel Extreme Masters does actually showcase that apparently switching towards Infestors and eventually Brute Lord is going to be the most common opener. Sometimes they go for like Ultra Switches, but at least the mid game Infestor play seems to be best. And the idea is that if you manage to fungal a dropship, you can obviously follow up that fungal growth with a couple of corrosive bios off of the Ravagers, and that makes it really good for your, you know, picking off of the dropships. It's quite a cool idea to be able to do it that way. I haven't been able to pull it off all that often yet myself, just because the control is really difficult and you do need to have a good, like, economy to, to really, you know, follow it up. But anyway, early on, we're going to be focusing on plus one, plus one, and we'll transition from there. I did make an overlord. There we go. And I'm thinking about going for four queens here and then pulling off the drones out of the gas geister. Going to be playing a very economy-focused build here. Uh, we need to make sure that we get full, like, full three base economy before we really start up any kind of unit producing. Just because it oftentimes will cost you the game if you don't have enough workers. The thing about Roach Ravager is that it's great early on. It's great in the middle part of the game as well. But once they go Terran Bio and they finish up 3-3 upgrade, you're gonna be in a terrible place. Like, you can't really be there. You need to make sure you, you know, transition into something else by then. Otherwise, you're just gonna be in so much trouble. Now, I did get a little lucky here because that Reaper didn't quite right away find us. And we're managing to shoo it away for the moment, just fine. That's very nice. And I can go ahead and just simply take my own third base as soon as I possibly want to. Gonna be using the two queens right now to spread some creep as well, already replacing those two queens with two additional ones. The four queen is very good for like early game defense. I would recommend you get it pretty much every single time. I'm gonna be playing basically exactly Solar's build, except that Solar tends to be getting um, only um, only three queens initially and then goes for the third base slightly faster um, But the idea of that build is basically to go for the timing that I just talked about So I didn't quite get that kill, but that's fine <clears throat> Gotta be saturating that gas once more and we'll start scouting about we'll Start scouting about the creep threat is gonna be crucial creep threat is really important nowadays and Since I have full saturation here. I'm gonna be adding on two more gases and a Roach Warren as well. Okay. I haven't really spotted all that much yet from my opponent. Looks like he's a bunch of Marines. Not all that many either. Okay then. Making more workers here. Very soon I will make a big round of links. Just because that's what the pro gamers do. So we try and do that ourselves as well. <clears throat> they usually go up to like 16 or so links. Right after hitting max saturation on three or on two bases. So I'm gonna be doing, you know, kind of the same thing. Still gonna be getting a couple of safety roaches too. Okay, so here's the links. Uh, that will add up to, I don't know, like 11 or so. That's fine. I can add on a couple more. And right now I'm also gonna go ahead and make a couple of defensive roaches here. So actually, accidentally I made three. Obviously not a big deal at all. And now we're gonna start up droning that base. <clears throat> Need to be getting my lair as well, getting it in the natural, just because it's easier to defend in case of like drop shenanigans. And we're just gonna keep on spreading the creep. Now, I haven't really seen very much aggression from my opponent at all, which I'm okay with. I mean, if he's letting me macro, I will gladly take that opportunity. Not really scouting very much. I saw a bunch of marines, which basically indicates to me that there's not gonna be any kind of, 
you know, Hellions move out anytime soon, or at least most likely not. Gonna be getting the plus one, plus one here. And we're just keeping vision of the map. I mean, I got vision of the, like, both of the third bases he can be taking. And for the moment, I'm not really too worried about it. The only thing that I definitely could have had done much better is my Overlord spread. Overlord spread is really atrocious for this point in the game. There's no good reason not to have much better spread. So we're gonna be moving those upwards. Crew spread is looking quite alright. Okay, so third base is definitely going to be fully saturated at this point. Got to go ahead and get some more gases here. And I'm also going to be getting the Roach Speed upgrade. And we'll do some scouting here as well with an Overseer. So now that I did indeed finish up droning, and you can see, like, I've gotten very little amounts of units here. Now that I've finished up most of my droning, um, we should be okay here to simply just start pushing onwards. So I'm making some units. Can use the Queens here for defense as well. Should not be that big of a deal. He's actually target firing really aggressively. Interesting. Don't usually see that. Queens, where are you at? <laughs> I'm actually losing way more than I anticipated. Interesting. I haven't seen like a drop stim timing in a very long time. Does he have plus one? Oh, he does have plus one. That's why this is going so well for him. Wow, we just lost way more than I anticipated for. Alright, we will eventually be able to clean this up. Which is alright, but that definitely cost me more. Now you gotta keep in mind... Damn, that cost actually a lot more than I anticipated for. You gotta keep in mind, though, that he obviously doesn't have a third base yet. And um, he put a lot of, like, eggs in that basket there to try and finish that off. To be fair, he did get the damage out of it that he was hoping for. Kind of a weird attack. Probably should have scouted with an Overlord. One of those ways you can easily avoid this from happening. Either way, I'm still, um, I'm still in a pretty good position. We just need to make sure we drone up the third base before we really add on anything else. Can't really go for the timing anymore that I had planned. I'm just simply gonna get 2-2 two, two now. We could do a similar timing at 2-2. Two, two. Um, let's get a queen injecting over there. He keeps on hunting for this base and there's actually another dropship happening uh, around my natural now. So we need to make sure we get over there. Creep has been on point though. Creep has definitely been on point. Hey! What? I have my roaches. Oh, I was gonna say. That would have been bad. Okay, then. And sadly, he's actually being really annoying with just a couple of drops. It's working out surprisingly well for him. If he takes out that upgrade, that would suck as well. And he's going to be able to. Hmm. This is costing me a lot more than I had anticipated. We still have a good timing. You know, when this upgrade finishes up, but we definitely do need to be maxed out by then. Otherwise, I'm just in a bad place. Okay, just spreading the roaches everywhere, really. Gotta try and keep my queen and jacks going. <clears throat> so, while he's killing a lot of workers, he still does not have a third base up. Or he took it in, like, a weird position, which is very uncommon. He more than likely just simply didn't take it. And we still have a stupid amount of creep spread as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get some Ravagers here. Okay then. We're gonna start scouting ahead. Plus two should finish up very shortly. Gonna just simply queue up the second upgrade there as well, and we'll go ahead here and get the fort. Now I'm paying attention to the minimap. Those units are moving home, it looks like. Which is pretty good for us to know. And he actually did end up taking this one, which is really uncommon. Okay, he did a huge stim, so we'll just be heading back. We'll push in right as plus two finishes. Which is right now. Looks like he's actually moving out himself now, so we don't really need to fight. He does get that kill on that base as well, so actually kind of a sloppy game so far by me, but the fact of the matter is that we still got a big army here. We still got a big army and we still got a big eco. We have all got, you know, kinds, all kinds of big things apparently. Kind of annoying, because I know that there's multiple dropships out in the corner, and he's actually playing against this style really well. We 
I'm gonna go ahead and grab this base instead. He's more than likely gonna be dropping. Yep, here we go. The funny thing is that I knew about it as well, right? But... <laughs> Okay, so we are pretty much maxed out now. There goes nothing. He decides to fight me. Oh my god! Oh my god, why is he giving me all this value? Why is he doing this? What's he doing? Alright then, thank you. Thank you, sweet, sweet gentleman. Alright then, so I was getting worried there that we were in a terrible place, and while we're definitely not in a great one yet, I mean, this could have been way worse. This could have been way worse. Looks like he's decided to pull all the defensive home one, once again, because he sees my forces move out. That's a great pickup for me. That was a huge pickup, actually. Massive blunder by my opponent, but we can gonna try our very best here to pick up those dropships. Looks like we haven't quite managed to yet, but... The siege tanks were forced to unsiege there, which is obviously exactly what they're made for. I mean, they're they're made to be sieged, not to like be unsieged, obviously. All right, then. I'll be moving up. I'll be moving up. Plus two armor just finished up as well, so that's great. And we can go ahead and fight if we want to. Don't think we have much to worry for. We're gonna go ahead and transition. We're completely back in this. We're completely back in this. Okay then. Trying to walk out of range of those siege tanks. And we are just reinforcing right now, so definitely, you know, banking on the fact of my opponent making a mistake, not quite the, you know, ideal way of winning, I suppose, but sometimes, sometimes that's just all you need to do. And my opponent says GG. Whew! Alright, so long story short in this particular game, okay? We managed to take a very lucky engagement. But still, even at that point, we weren't in like the worst out of worst scenario. So let me try and showcase to you why in the replay. Alright, so I fast forwarded through the replay to the point where my opponent made a gigantic blunder. And I wanted to go off really quickly on... Uh, why I think we were still in an alright-ish position. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have made a lot of mistakes in this game. Losing practically all my workers at the third base, um, losing one of my evolution chambers, losing the fourth base and not cancelling it, and just in general, making sloppy plays. However, the fact of the matter is that my opponent was playing super aggressive, and as long as you take one good engagement, Rudge Ravage is sort of like steamrolls, right? That's the point that I'm trying to get across here, like, I see a lot of people like give up really early and while I was already a bit in that mindset because I know my opponent if he's gonna like play well there's no way I can really win this game anymore but I was definitely not out of it yet it's not worth giving it up until you've actually like lost the match. So this right here I believe is where my opponent you know makes the mistake. So he decides to fight me right over here without landing the uh without running the medevax and I don't know exactly where his, like, attention is at right now. He is actually paying attention to this fight. I mean, this is his camera right here. He is overzealous. He's trying to, like... He's trying to, like, finish me off here. Not realizing that I simply had, you know, still a lot of army uh, ready to sit. And he even got to the point where he didn't drop the siege tanks. So that honestly was mostly just a mistake on my opponent's end. Rather than, um, you know, rather than me just following it up well. And this happens, like, a lot more than you really should try... And, um, you know, try and, 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 and you know, one and a half happen. So, at this point, it's just a matter of me following it up with more and more aggression and allowing myself to sort of, like, roll over him. Um, and that's something that, you know, Roach Ravager can quite easily do. If you manage to get a solid lead, it's very easy to capitalize on it and just simply go from there. So, we ended up winning a match that I probably shouldn't have won. But I hope, at the very least, you enjoyed watching it. If you haven't already, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, Hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you in the next one. Boom!